drink more water, right? <laughs> if he comes down with the flu, I'll tell you. Luke, Luke chapter 15 tonight. Very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, I appreciate the pastor around the group tonight. Uh, it was actually three weeks. Uh, but today marks another anniversary in uh, my life. It's a personal anniversary. <coughs> Uh, 27 years ago tonight uh, was whenever I, my battalion was bombed in Saudi Arabia. And um, from the injuries my dad succumbed to, he ended up being met back out to Germany and from Germany to Florida and discharged. And, um, never seemed to recover fully. And uh, he made it another 18 years before he passed away. And, uh, I tell you, I've heard a lot of folks talk about uh, patriotism and uh, how much it should mean and how much it shouldn't mean. But let's never forget, even though all gave some, some actually gave all. And uh, I miss my dad tonight. Uh, you pray for me. And, uh, you know, the old preacher said you have to give it to the Lord. I tell you what, it's easy to give it, it's hard to let go. Yes. And uh, you pray for me tonight. So much is going on in the church today. And so many battles we're facing, so many obstacles. Organized religion, so to speak, organized church is becoming a thing of the past. One person said where the church is today is where the world was yesterday. And where the world is today, the church will soon be tomorrow. There's not a soul here tonight that can't say that we allow more things in our life, in our homes, in our minds, in our heart than we should allow in keeping peace and unity with the Holy Spirit. And we all have to bow our heads and pray for mercy and pray for grace and abundance. And tonight I'm going to preach to you a message about the prodigal son in a different light, so to speak. This is a scripture we can apply application to. We can apply it to different things. Amen. If you read with me tonight, Luke 15, beginning in verse 14, the Bible says this. And when he had spent all, the Bible says there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And the Bible says, And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hundred servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. He says this to himself, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. Amen. If God will help me tonight, I want to preach to you a message simply titled, how to do right when you're in the wrong place. Come on. Amen. How do you do right when you're in the wrong place? Let's pray together. Dear Father, Amen. Lord, we come to you so humbly tonight. Dear Lord, understand me. Lord, there's not a person in this church tonight who can uh, stand up in pride and say, look what we've done or look who we are. Lord, we all are a product tonight of your generosity, of your mercy, and your applied grace in our life. Lord, if we escape hell, it's only because of your shed blood. And I pray tonight, dear Lord, that you speak to our hearts. Lord, you get into our lives, into our homes, into our minds, and our heart. And, and Lord, you establish your throne. And Lord, we'll be submissive to you and allow you to do a work in our life, dear Lord, that pleases you, whether it pleases anybody else. Lord, we praise you tonight for your goodness. We love you so much in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Amen. The 
prodigal son is a picture tonight of anyone that's here. You see, he through his selfish actions, he left his father's house and he went away from doing any appearance of good works. Do you realize from the time he left his father's house, the Bible says he went out and he enjoyed riotous living and he spent and he spent until he spent all that he had. When you look at the father's son in the world, not in the right place, but in the wrong place. When you look at the prodigal son, you see no good works whatsoever in his life. Thank you, God. But let's be careful tonight before we condemn this man to hell. Because you see, his father didn't condemn him. Amen. Can I say to you tonight, the father waited with anticipation patiently. Not only that, but he kept the farm going. Yes. Right. Preacher Tim, he kept feeding the fatty calf. Amen. Amen. Blessing God. He kept a watch for eye over the horizon. The Bible says that there was hope for this rebellious young man. There was hope tonight for the one that was disobedient to his father. Amen. And I'm here to tell you when a child of God tonight is in a wrong place, there is an unseen power that becomes active in his life. You see, when the child of God is not in the will of God, God is working to get him back into his will. Amen. We call that in our parenting correction. How many of you was ever corrected by your parents? Amen. Hey, I've been corrected quite a few times. Amen. Now if you talk to my mom back there, she don't remember any. <laughs> Maybe one. But I got corrected quite a bit. But I'm here to tell you in my Christian life as I got away from the Father's house, I've been corrected back Amen. into the Father's house Amen. too. Amen. And we understand tonight that there is a power that becomes activated in the child of God's life. And its sole purpose is in restoring the prodigal to the father's house. Here the Bible tells us tonight that the prodigal came to himself. The Bible says that when he came to himself, he went home. One thing that will help you in studying God's word is to use vocabulary that you learned in school. <laughs> One of the first things you learned in grammar was that words like came and went are verbs. And verbs are action words. They speak of something that has to be done. And we understand tonight that the prodigal son, when he came to himself, he took action. And he came to his father's house. He left the far country. Amen. So I want to ask you tonight, what action caused him to come to himself and what action caused him to go home? Because how do you do right when you find yourself in the wrong place? The Bible tells us tonight that he joined himself to a man of that country. And the Bible says he went into the fields and fed swine. I have a hard time relating to feeding swine in the fields. But I don't have a hard time relating feeding swine in the hog pen. Amen? Come on. So tonight I'm going to preach to you about this hog pen and not necessarily the field that the prodigal was in. Can I say to you tonight that the prodigal found himself in the wrong place wanting to do right? First thing he had to do, Brother Robert, was he had to drop that pail that he was holding in his hand. Do you know something tonight? You'll never hold that pail of slop and be welcome in the Father's house. Amen. Do you know tonight that the pail full of slop was a picture of man's sin? The pail is the part that we have in this story. It's the part that we have to physically lean over and pick up. Now it contains the nasty, awful sin of this world. And we're going to become partakers of it by taking it in our hand. Amen. You see the prodigal son as he carried that pail into that hog pen. What he was doing was he was flee uh, feeding his flesh with the sin in the pail. Come on. And can I say to you tonight, we have to let go of the things that feed our flesh. Amen. 
I remember when I got ordained, many of you were there. I'll never forget my dad handed me a Bible that night. And he said to me words that I'm sure Preacher Tim will say to you. He said this book will keep you from sin. Or sin will keep you from this book. Amen. And my friend, I'm here to tell you tonight that too often we find ourselves like the prodigal son. And instead of the word of God in our hand feeding our spirit, we've got the pale of sin in our hand feeding our flesh. Amen. And we have to learn to lay down that pale and pick up that word. Amen. 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 You see, the pale is a job. The Bible said the prodigal son went and he joined himself to a Man from that country, and this man owned hogs, and this man uh, had a job for the prodigal to, to do. I'm sure the prodigal was like, hey, do you have any food? He says, I ain't going to give you nothing, but I'll let you work for what you get. <coughs> and he must not have been going to feed him to the end of the day after the work was complete, because the Bible says as he was slopping the hogs, he was about to eat what the hogs was eating. Friend Karen, that tells the job. And just like any job, it pays. <clears throat> but that job pays in disappointment. Amen. You carry the pail not at the Father's house, but in the hog pen of the world. And in that pail is the sin that the flesh uh, craves. And as we feed our flesh, we become <clears throat> disappointed. Amen. And I say to you, it's a lonely job. I don't know about you, but if I see you with a pail in your hand going to slap hogs, I'm not going to ask you if you need any help. <laughs> Maybe you're that person. But I can't imagine watching somebody go and do something that's as awful and nasty smelling as it is to say, hey, I want to do that job. They don't teach that job in college curriculums. They don't have a vocational school for that at the high school. My friend, that is a job that anybody <coughs> can do. But no child of God. Amen. Not only is it a lonely job, but it's an unthankful job. You better not have the flu. <laughs> That's why I preach my change. Praise the Lord. <laughs> It's an unthankful job. You might have one of those jobs where you get thank yous every once in a while. Me and Preacher Tim, when we work in society as troopers, oftentimes people bring cookies by the office. Oftentimes they bring donuts, bless their soul. Oftentimes they just come by with a card that maybe some children at a daycare sign. Just want to say thank you for the job you do. Well, my friend, if your job's feeding the hogs, nobody's going to come and say thank you. Amen. That's just a job nobody's thankful for. Amen. Do you know something tonight? That pale carrying is demoralizing. <coughs> it's unrewarding. You never lay your head down on the pillow at night and go, man, I'll tell you what, I feel so proud of myself for feeding the hogs. That's right. Moralizing. It's not what a child of God should be identified with. Amen. And Amen. quite frankly, can I say honestly, mm -hmm. not it speaks for itself. One thing I learned a long time ago about being a Christian, about being a preacher. Do you know you can tell when a preacher don't study? Come on. Do you know you can tell when he does? <coughs> Your time with Jesus speaks for itself. Amen. It don't matter what you say. It don't matter how you look. It don't matter how you dress. It don't matter anything that you can do physically in your body. But there is a power that goes with those who spend time with Christ. Amen. And your time with Jesus speaks for itself whether you want it to or not. Feeding the hogs is one of those jobs. It's not spending time with the Lord. Amen. No, friend, you can't do right. 
carrying the pail you gotta you gotta drop the pail amen then number two not only did he have to drop the pail but he had to jump the rail come on you see we understand hogs being kept in a, in a pen in a corral I just imagine as hard-headed as pigs are, if you put them out in that field and you try to feed them, they'd be gone for you know. Hard to shepherd hogs. Amen. But you can put them in a pen and it can get nasty and sloppy and muddy and stinking and they'll hang right in there. But you've got to be free from the pen before you can serve God. Amen. Notice Amen. this phrase. Free from sin and free from the pen. <clears throat> you see, the Bible says he who the Son has set free is what? Free He's indeed. free indeed. Amen. He's not pinned up in the world. He's not pinned up in the stinking awfulness of sin. No, my friend, the hog pen restricts our progress in our Christian life. Amen. You can only go to the edge of the hog pen. <coughs> I don't know about your experience, but my experience with hog pens is it's just as muddy on the outside as it is on the inside. On. You can get to the edge of the pen if you want to, you're still standing in the mire and the muck. Amen. <coughs> it's restricting. It's filthy, it's nasty, it stinks. You can't stay in the confines of the hog pen and inspect. Uh, come on. And expect to have a healthy and productive Christian life. Amen. Because Amen. you see, the hog pens like the world that's around us tonight. The Bible says we're instructed to come ye out of the world and be a separate people. Amen. When you're in the pen, you're associated with the slop that's in the pail. You might think that you're just an observer. You might think, well, I'm in the world still, but I'm just a spectator. But I'm here to tell you tonight. The old saying is, you are or you will become who you're around. Amen. You are or you will become a part of where you're around. Amen. Christians have no dealings in the world. Christians have no place in the hot pen. Amen. If you want to do right, not only do you have to drop the pail, but you also got to jump the rail. Amen. And then number three, and I'll be done tonight. Bless he also had to hit the trail. Yeah. You know something tonight? I'm glad when God saved me, he moved me. Yeah. Come on, Richard. I'm glad when he saved me, I changed locations. I went from the hog pit of the world to the house of the Father. Amen. Amen. Don't you know tonight that God has a plan? That when a person gives his heart and his life to him, then he comes to live with him. Amen. And my friend, the Father will not restrict you from going into the world. He will not restrict you uh, from doing wrong. We call that the permissive will of God. It's not God's will, but God will permit your will to be done. Come on. And my friend, there's an awful price to pay when we do things our way. Amen. But thank God we have the ability tonight, just like the prodigal, Drop the pail, jump the rail, and he hit the trail. The Apostle Peter said it this way. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. The phrase Peter uses, to whom coming, if we were to understand that properly in the English language, it would actually mean coming to him. To whom coming is what Peter said. He's speaking of Jesus to New Testament Christians. And what he was saying to them is, you are to come to Christ. Come on. Can I remind you that you came to Christ in the past? You came to Christ in the past and we understand that that's where salvation began in our life. God did the calling, we did the responding. And we came to Him and He gloriously saved us. But there again in vocabulary, that word coming is a verb. 
Only this time, this verb is used in the Greek, Greek language, and the Greek language is very expressive. And we find that this word coming is in the present tense. It's a present tense verb, and what it means is there's continuous action that follows. Amen. Amen. So what he is speaking of, and we apply this to the prodigal leaving the hotbed and coming to the Father's house, yeah. is that we're not just to come one time, but we are to continually Amen. come to Him daily. Amen. How do you do right when you find yourself in the wrong place? Well, my friend, you drop that pail of sin that you carry and that you're feeding your flesh with, you drop it. You get over to the rail of the hot pen and you don't stand there and say, I wish I could go over it. You go on over Amen. Amen. And you don't stay by the hot pen. You head back to the Father's house. Amen. And coming to Him, Peter says, we come continuously. We keep coming to Christ. Always seeking Him. Every day turning to Him. Always relying on Him in order to stay close to Him. Can I say not only is it in the present tense, but it's also in the subjective mood. You see, the subjective mood means that it takes action in order to complete. You see, Peter was asking them, in an instructing kind of way, Peter was saying, if you want to have peace in your life, if you want to have freedom in your life, if you want to be close to the Lord, you have to come to Him continually, daily, to stay in His presence. Amen. But it's subjective. It means it takes action on your part. And that's where we fail sometimes. You see, we fail sometimes because just like the children of Israel, when Moses led them out of Egypt, the Bible says they took a three-day journey. And you know what happened? They didn't look forward and say, man, look how far we've gone in three days. No, instead they looked and said, man, we're three days away from what we had. Let's go back and get it. We become so discouraged and so despondent so quickly. There was a time that we came to Christ. There was a time that we came to Him every day in prayer. We came to Him every day in study. And we came to Him every day in praise. But you know what? In this Christian life, the new can wear off pretty quickly. And if we're not careful, we'll be back to the Father's house and not have left the hog pen. It's still in our mind. We've traveled this three-day journey, but hey, look what we had. We'll get to thinking about where we was instead of where we need to be. Amen. And you know what? We'll start praying a little less. Come on. We'll start reading and studying a little less. And then we'll start praising all together. Then maybe every once in a while. Can I ask you a serious question? Have you ever seen somebody become discouraged and actually stay in church? <coughs> Man, I tell you, I pastored for a long time. Preacher Tien's pastored for a long time. I grew up in a pastor's home. I've seen people get discouraged over the silliest things. Sometimes it was really important things, but a lot of times it was really silly things. Get discouraged. And the next thing you know, they're gone. Amen. Because you see, when we're inconsistent to coming to Jesus, we'll also be inconsistent with coming to church. Amen. 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 So to keep from being overtaken by the world, Continually, continually, we got to check what's in our hands. And by checking what's in our hands, we'll know what needs to be put down and what needs to be carried. Amen. Amen. Not only that, friend, we look around at our surroundings. I'm claustrophobic. 
my wife can turn over sometimes and pin the covers down beside of me and I'll just freak out. Flailing my arms, trying to get out from the trap. I just can't stand it. But you know what? That's the way every Christian ought to be in the hog pen of the world. Amen. We ought to be a little spiritually claustrophobic. Amen. Hey, the hog pen ain't nowhere to restrict the child of God. Amen. We ought to do like the prodigal and jump the rail. And my friend, we ought to hit that trail. Amen. So preacher, how do you do right when you find yourself in the wrong place? There's four things I share with you and I'm closing. <coughs> the first thing is you've got to take responsibility for where you find yourself. I don't know the reason the problem left home. Other than he had a desire and a want. We know he didn't have the experience. He didn't say, hey, I'm going to do that like I did before. No, he wanted to go do something new. Could the father have stopped him? Sure he could. How many mamas and daddies here has ever bought cars and let their kids drive them and say they're theirs and, you know, your kid gets a little... Rebellious acting and says, Well, I'll just do this, and you go, Well, you're not going to go to that car. Oh, yeah. Come on. The father could have kept him at home. But he wouldn't have never come to himself. And tonight, friend, what we have to learn to do is be responsible for us. But David said something in Sunday school this morning about when you're raising children. There's things you can't do anymore when you have to go, hey, what will my kids think about what I'm fixing to do, what I'm fixing to say, or how I'm fixing to act? You know what that's, that is? That's just being responsible, is it not? Amen. We used to have that responsibility. I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible for what I see, what I do, where I go, what I see, who I listen to. I'm responsible for that. My friend, whenever we take that kind of responsibility, God will deal with us personally to get things done. Our problem is we want to be a part of a group. We want to say, hey, this matters and that matters. <clears throat> we want to protest like the world. We want to have problems with people who aren't like us. When the truth is, don't matter who you want to take to heaven, there's only one person you can take that. Amen. 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 That's right. We've got to take responsibility, church. And then number two, we've got to avoid any delay. You know what the devil's good at? You can say, hey, I'm going to quit this. I'm going to start that. I'm going to do this better. I'm going to do that better. And all the devil has to say to us, well, don't do it today. Come on, friend. Not only we got to start being responsible for us, but we got to start taking action when action needs to be taken. Amen. Amen. I used to tell people a lot in witnessing. You bring somebody to a point of decision and you say something like, Well, do you think if you pray today and ask Jesus to save you? Do you think today he would do that? And they'd say something like, well, you know, I'm really not ready today. And I'd always say this, preacher, I bet you've said this a thousand times. You better quit thinking that way. You're not going to get saved when you want to. You better get saved when you can. Amen. Amen. And my friend, that's the opportunity God gives us. The Bible says the prodigal came to himself and he took action. Amen. What if he took a delay? What if he'd said to Yara, I'll go back to the Father's house. Hey, friend, I'm here to tell you, whenever you challenge the devil like that and you give him a little bit of space, he'll ruin your life. Amen. Amen. We've got to take responsibility and we've got to avoid delay. Number three, we've got to start changing our direction. One thing I noticed, Pastor, 
Well, hey, I've noticed it in my own life of inconsistencies. We like to zigzag through life. We like to make quick changes and reverse those changes and go back to where we was. Or we do like to bend them on the clock. We swing one way real far on one side, and then we swing all the way back to the other side. <coughs> you think you'll stop in the middle, but you never will. Friend, I'm here to tell you, you're not going to get to heaven being wicked and worldly. Amen. Amen. These rock stars, pop singers, these Hollywood actors and actresses, these politicians can name the name of Jesus over their life if they want to and not live it. Man, that's a shaky place to live. Amen. Saying I'm a Christian and not knowing that you are. And I tell you how you know that you are. You drop that pail and you jump the rail. Amen. You change the direction you've been going in life and you get back to the Father's house. Amen. Amen. I want to live in such a way. I've heard Preacher Tim say it. I've heard many of you say it. I want to live in such a way that when they roll my casket in front of this pulpit, there ain't nobody sitting in this church got a doubt where my soul is. Amen. 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 But we can't get there going by the world. We get that way by changing Amen. our direction. Amen. And then last and I'm done, we got to move on and do God's will. I see a therapist about every two, three weeks about PTSD. I have a whole lot of guilt about my dad dying. I got a lot of guilt because my dad wasn't in the military until I talked him into going back in before the Gulf War started and we got sent overseas. You see, my dad had pastored churches for years. I grew up being a preacher's kid. And here I was, 19, 20 years old. I'd been off in the military enjoying it. My dad had been in the military, the same branch. I came up with a program where men his age that had prior service could actually go back in. I still remember the conversation sitting at his table. Dad, that's what you want to do. <coughs> Dad, you're going to go back in. You'll enjoy it. We'll get to travel together. We'll get to have a good time. And 27 years ago tonight, Thank you. I found him book down, exposed with gas. In his life, never changed. We have guilt. We have problems with our past. But you know what? If we stay in the past, we'll never go forward. Amen. Amen. And if I'm willing to let go, you ought to be willing to let go too. Amen. Amen. I know where daddy is. Amen. I want Daddy to know I'm coming too. Amen. Amen. How are we going to do that? We've got to find God's will for our life and we've got to get going. Right. What you carrying tonight? What you carrying? Are you carrying the Word of God today? Man, if we be honest. We find it more sin to be concerned with. We can deceive ourselves. We got that bell of slop. We feed our flesh more than we feed our spirit. Amen. It's going to leave you discouraged. And I'm here to tell you, when you get discouraged, the next thing you'll get is out. You got to take responsibility tonight. Amen. You gotta take action. Don't put it off. Put Jesus first. What's the old song say? Put him first and he'll take care of you. Let's bow our heads and pray tonight. Brother Robert comes with a song of invitation.